um, I may then request um, Sam Cegini. He is an independent filmmaker and founder of the uh, Sam Pictures Productions. He has been involved in making the official video for Aqua Lung. Many of you might know, 50 years ago, uh, the group produced a video, a sort of an album, including the video called Aqua Lung, which indeed talks about the homelessness. It says, you know, it says, Aqua Lung, my friend, don't you st start away, stay away uneasy. So it's a reaction to homelessness. And it has been made into a video um, by, by Sam, to celebrate the 50 years of uh, the protection of uh, Aqualung album. Here you are, Sam. Hello, thank you so much uh, for the wonderful introduction. I'm uh, very happy to be here today. It's an uh, honor to be here. Uh, so um, as a teenager, I used to spend time um, in these wonderful uh, panels being part of the film crew, uh, recording uh, these inspiring sessions. So. Now being here, um, presenting my latest creation for the legendary uh, band Jetro Putol uh, on the occasion of the 50th anniversary is really an honor. Uh, so Akko Long uh, is a song about homelessness um, and um, we have tried to uh, uh, sort of look uh, into an updated version visually um, to cover uh, more of the uh, up-to-date uh, issues with the homeless and um, uh, Hassan Ozadian, my uh, partner in crime, is here today with me. Uh, hi, Hassan. Uh, so we are very happy to invite you to watch uh, Jetro Tal's Long video, uh, which was made in a very tight uh, deadline for Warner Music. Um, and I would like to thank Urban Plus Future for having me today here. Uh, and, and a special thanks to Warner Music for letting us present the video today. I hope you enjoy. So my name is Sam Cegini, and uh, I'm an independent filmmaker, animator, and graphic designer. Today, I want to uh, take this opportunity to talk about limitations that can lead to innovation and creativity. And um, it's uh, based on my experiences making videos. Um, I've been making videos for the last 15 years. I started making them when I was 14 years old. And uh, this is my first studio, by the way. So. Uh, uh, Walking in this direction goes way back. I've grown up in an artistic family. My mother is a painter. Uh, my uh, sister is a musician. My uncle, my late uncle, who used to live with us, uh, was a painter, musician, and poet. And uh, my father used to play an instrument, but in an artistic family, somebody has to earn money. So he left um, playing instruments. And uh, it was, I, I was 13 years of age, 14 years old, uh, that one day my uncle walked into my room and asked me if I could send his script to Steven Spielberg. He had written this script. And uh, of course, I knew who Spielberg was, of course, but uh, being 13 years of age, I was not really afraid of getting in touch with him. I had the courage to send the script to him. So I searched online for his email address and I eventually found something and um, I sent the script to him. I have no idea if he received the script, but uh, it taught me something that uh, I could connect with the world sitting here in my room and uh, make connections. I could just connect to the world. And uh, I got to connect with a lot of people from around the world. So the internet has always been this magical door through the world for me and uh, opening new horizons for me. Uh, when I was 18 years old, I came across this call for interest from my favorite artist, Chris De Beck. They wanted uh, to do a music video for a spaceman came traveling. Um, and I had this whole image of the video in my head, but uh, it was too expensive to make. Being 18 years of age um, with absolutely no budget and no equipment, I started connecting with the actors and actresses I had in mind for the roles and very famous ones. I even got to talk to one of them. And of course she just passed because uh, they didn't really believe me that I'm going to make a video for Chris Beck. So the reality really hit me pretty hard there that I couldn't do much without a reasonable budget. And this opened my eyes to my limitations and what I had available. So I started changing my point of view and um, I changed this whole direction of uh, the film to animation. 
and I had no experience making one. I had just started studying graphic design in the only art school for boys in Ghazvi in Iran. And I just uh, bought some pastel papers and started drawing those scenes I had in mind using charcoal. And uh, for putting them into the computer, I had no a scanner and uh, there were no smartphones yet. So I used my Sony Ericsson phone to take pictures of those drawings and uh, put them into the computer and um, uh, put them into the computer to just uh, start messing around with the software, uh, trying to add some motion to my drawings and make the video out of it. It turned out to be uh, uh, video art more than a animation, you know. Uh, but uh, and 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 uh, I learned that day this I must use whatever I have available to deliver those ideas. That's the important part. So to just make them alive. And I even started searching for sponsors to make this video. I was uh, fortunate enough to work with the International Architecture Research Association at the time. And it was just, uh, I, I was really lucky to be there being uh, in this international uh, atmosphere. And uh, as I uh, mentioned earlier, uh, I was filming uh, the sessions, these inspiring panels for UN Habitat and um, Mr. Purvazir may remember the day that I presented my first ever PowerPoint <laughs> to show my proposal to ask him to uh, sponsor my first video project. I eventually submitted the video to the competition. It did not win the competition, but later it was screened in another competition in Isfahan um, Contemporary Museum of Arts. This is my picture at, uh, at one of the events. Um, uh, recording video, and this is my presentation um, to IRA, and uh, this was the result. This was the result of the video, which was then screened at the Isfahan Contemporary Music of Arts, and uh, then it led to connecting me with the guitarist of Chris De Beck because he had liked, he had seen the video and he had liked it very much. So. I learned something new there that even though I didn't win the competition, I was, uh, I, I was happy to use my creativity to build the contacts and move forward just to create something new out of it. That's how I met Linda Nyland, the uh, famous Dutch uh, musician and folk singer songwriter, uh, whom, I'm, whom I'm very happy to call my dearest friend today. And uh, she watched the video and she was uh, the first artist who trusted me to make my first video for one of her songs. And that's how I got to make Traveler, my first animation. And um, it was my first animation and took, uh, took me a year to figure out how to make one. And I had no idea how to make an animation. I just started learning and did the entire video with errors. And I even invented my own way of making an animation, which was really time consuming and makes no sense now that I know how to make one, but uh, that's how I managed to make the first one. Eventually, I found uh, myself being a uh, music video director, even though I had no time to continue my studies, which I wish I could have, but it taught me something. That's how, uh, how I can deal with barriers and limitations and make the best of what I have to give birth to the images I have in mind. I just wanted uh, to give you a background of where I'm coming from. So because I believe I wouldn't be here today if it was not for all those errors, uh, uh, tri trials and limitations I faced along the way. So uh, today I'm here to speak about my latest experience for King Crimson, Jacko M. Jackchik. Um, I made an animated video for Sir Lenny Henry produced by legendary British producer Chris Porter back in 2015. This is Chris Porter. And uh, this is Lenny Henry. Um, we made the video called The Cops Don't Know. It was about the Black Lives Matter campaign. And Jack Jackcheck uh, was the composer of the music and had co-written the song with Lenny. And uh, that's how I met Jacko for the first time. So uh, five years later in 2019, Jacko gets in touch with me and asks if I still make animations. Uh, we talked about it and he informed me he's working on his uh, new solo album. And that's how we started working on the trouble with angels. 
it was a song inspired partly by the Wings of Desire by uh, the German filmmaker Wim Wenders. I asked Jacko to send me an invitation letter so I could travel to England for the shooting. But then we totally lost connection because uh, of the protests going on at the time, the government had turned the internet off here. He had to send an invitation in an envelope to post it to me. And I received it after, I guess, two weeks. So in the meantime, I had asked my friend in Turkey to inform him why I'm, I was not in touch. So uh, he booked the flights, um, uh, go to Turkey, to Istanbul to shoot the video. Uh, but um, at the same time, we wanted to go to the airport uh, to shoot the video, um, to fly to Istanbul. Uh, it was the same day that uh, the tragic uh, plane shooting happened in Tehran and all flights were canceled. So eventually, uh, Ajako wrote me that um, we may not be able to do this if we don't do this online. So I under understand if we cannot make this video. Uh, but eventually with this, with this online, I was sitting here in my studio in Gazvin and uh, Jacko in the UK. Uh, he rented a green screen studio in London and I had projected the picture on my wall here. And on the other side, the British filmmaker Toby Amis, who was helping us as a cameraman, uh, got the directions uh, from me to uh, then pass on to Jacko via Bluetooth headphone. Uh, and Toby had uh, clamped the phone um, to, he, uh, to, to the camera, to the monitor of the camera to enable me see the shots. So that's how I could direct the scenes. And after shooting Jacko, I still needed some more shooting to do. And as I, I wanted to do this in Iran, but as soon as I planned to shoot the videos here, the pandemic of COVID-19 appeared out of nowhere and uh, all the shootings were canceled again. So I had no choice to continue doing it remotely again. My dear friends, Linden Island, Bert Riedebus offered me to buy a green screen in the Netherlands so we could shoot those videos remotely there. And eventually we they did uh, record the videos uh, in the Netherlands and in, uh, partly in Turkey so these are some shots of how we actually did this video for Jacko Jackcheck. And uh, uh, this is Netherlands. Uh, these parts are recorded in Istanbul. And um, uh, those scenes were eventually shot and I could make this video. And not only we did make that happen, we made an entire new video for Jacko titled um, On Certain Times, uh, starring Al Mori. And uh, that's how uh, I met Ian Anderson of Jetro Tall because uh, Jacko had recommended um, my videos to Ian Anderson of Jetro Tall. And um, on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of Akolong, the video that uh, uh, opened uh, this uh, event, uh, we made this video for Jetro Tall. And uh, uh, it's been really surreal for me to you know, be um, able to make this, but I don't think that it would be possible without all these limitations. And uh, throughout the way, we turned these barriers into wings for our creativity and innovation. That's why I wanted to take this opportunity today to, on this special day, to share my experiences with you. Thank you so much.